Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Sachin here. I'm going to explain a beautiful lyric from Percy Bishi Shali. As you all of know that one among the greatest romantics of the second generation. The poem that I'm going to explain it to you is a lament. L-A-M-E-N-T. Lament means a strong feeling of sorrow or sadness or melancholy. That is the result of some huge loss. The poem that I'm going to discuss in detail is a lyric. Lyric is a poem that is the record of the personal feeling of an individual. This very particular poem Shelley wrote in the year 1821 in Italy and this poem was published as many as four years later posthumously P O S T H U M O U S L Y posthumously posthumously is the word that is used particularly for that work that comes into print after the death of the author and posthumous is that child who is born after the death of his or her father. So this poem is posthumous work of Percy Bishi Shali. Why? Because the poem was published two years after his own death by his own wife, Mrs. Mary Shelley daughter of Godwin, William Godwin. The poem is divided into two parts, five lines each with the rhyme scheme A, A, B, A, B. The poem here expresses the strong, strong feeling of sadness and sorrow and suffering of the persona of the poem, the character of the poem or the speaker of this poem. See how sad here the persona of this poem feels like oath to the west wind, stanza return in dejection near Naples, just as in these two poems the speaker of the poem is in a pessimistic mood in the same manner here the speaker of the poem is in pessimistic mode though in Ode to the West Wind the speaker of the poem ends the poem on a happy and positive and optimistic note but here we find that optimistic note missing. The poet is the speaker of the poem is absolutely sad. He begins the poem in great sadness and ends the poem in great sadness. So now let's look at this beautiful poem and understand it line by line. O world, O life, O time. So see the poem begins with apostrophe figure of speech. Why? Because in the first line of the poem, the speaker of the poem address his words to the world, to life, to time. It means he personifies also these three things and he imagines or personifies the world, life and time as a ladder with so many steps or so many rungs. R-U-N-G-S rungs stand for those steps that we use or fix for making a ladder on whose last steps I climb. So he says that he is standing on the last step or rung of the ladder of the world, life, and time.
see how sad it means the poet is just lying or the speaker <coughs> of the poet is just lying in his <coughs> death bed it means we can say that his days are numbered <coughs> <coughs> see the suffering see the just pessimism of the speaker of the poet <coughs> how upset how sad and how sorrowful the speaker of the poem feels as if he has lost the meaning of their life generally when do we want to actually die when we have no hope when we lose the meaning of the life and realize we realize that this life is this life holds no worth or holds no value or this life is absolutely worthless why because we suffer one buffet of misfortune after after so many buffets of misfortune same happened to Percy Bysshe Shelley why because Shelley was absolutely Shelley was absolutely exhausted and tired why because he made lots of attempts and made lots of endeavor to bring certain change in the society he wanted to overthrow that system that government that institution but he failed he was forced to he was forced to put put him he was forced to put or he was forced to exile himself in 1818 18 19 around so see how sad here he feels trembling at that where i had stood before he says now my body shudders my limbs shake and tremble when i look back when i think about my boyhood days there was a time shelly was a mad shelly there was a time shelly was full of uncontrolled enthusiasm he was a rebel that rebel that rebelling spirit is gone there was a time shelly could out strip or shelly could out play or surpass the the aerial surge of the west wind that he speaks in o to the west wind but that time is gone nevertheless foolishly in the next line fourth line of the first stanza he ask what when will return the glory of your prime your stand for world life time he said is it possible to get back those days he has lost forever lost forever no he says no more oh never more see the these exclamatory words oh no more never more see the words words are coming from the depth, depth of the heart of the persona of this poem he feels absolutely shattered just as shelly or the persona of the of uh, the poem ode to the west when feels in the fourth canto of the poem where he says that he he falls upon the thorn of life and bleed when he says in the next stanza oh left me as a wave as a cloud as a leaf see in the same stanza sorry not in the next in the same stanza or the canto he says see how pessimist he is there in the same manner the speaker of the poem is here but that poem to the west been ends on a positive and pass and uh, just optimistic note if winter comes can spring be far behind but here we find that optimism missing almost everywhere e even in the end in the next line he himself says 
no more oh never more he says no no chance at all to get back those days those boyhood days and with those boyhood days that joy that enthusiasm that vigor that strain that courage that potential gone forever just as his boyhood days can never come back in the same manner that strain the stamina vigor that that rebellious spirit can never get back see the next stanza out of the day and night a joy has taken a flight so he says there was time in his own life he felt extreme extreme happiness in the day time in the night time means his there was time his life was absolutely good he felt absolutely good he felt absolutely enthusiastic he could do anything he could shoot the world he could shoot the heaven he could he could make impossible possible why because he had limitless store of strength and energy and potential and stamina but unfortunately that day is gone that time is gone that world is gone this is a different world since this world is different life is different time is different neither that world is today nor that life is today nor the time the world life time all change and that's why the speaker of the poem is absolutely changed why because the world has changed time has changed life has changed and these all things have made the life of the speaker of the poem absolutely change and this is not a what expected change this is not a kind of a welcome change this is not a kind of a change that he could he wants to embrace but is forced to embrace and accept and and surrender to this change see fresh spring and summer and winter hoar so he said there was a time spring gave him freshness spring energized him summer gave him a warmth and winter hoar miss mist and fog and frost just made him appreciate made him enjoy that beauty of the weather beauty of the season but now neither the spring nor summer nor winter bring any change bring any positivity and instead these all changes in the weather or the change these are just changes in the season somehow somehow intensify his suffering and somehow make his weak heart feel more pain more suffering and make him more sorrowful and more melancholic see move my faint heart with grief but with delight no more oh never more he says so there was time he used to enjoy the weather used to enjoy the seasons spring gave him new hope new enthusiasm new courage and summer gave him a kind of a warmth that he loved and enjoyed and winter hoary atmosphere there the frost frosty winter foggy winter just gave him gave him just just made him appreciate the beauty of the season season some had a change in the season and the weather had a kind of a positive impact on him but now 
change in the weather and Caesar has a negative kind of impact in him. Why? Because the world is changed, life is changed, and the time as well. And that's why sorrow and sorrow and suffering and suffering. And not a speck of joy is joy in his own life. So now let's look at the figure of speech. First line, world, life, time, address. So apostrophe is used. Send the <clears throat> on whose last step I climbs on whose so personifies it. That's that's why whose is used. So it means it personifies world, life, and time. So personification is also used. Next, trembling at what? Tumbling, sorry, at that where I had stood before at CC repetition of T sound at here T, here T, then here T, it means repetition of T sound that is consonant. So, consonant is used in this third line when will return the glory of your prime. So again, if you notice here, yeah, sound of R, sound of R, sound of R. So again, consonants. Next, no more, oh, no more. So repetition or palilogia because this word is repeated only to lay emphasis on this that he will never get back that joy he had in his past out of the day and night a joy has taken a fly the joy has taken a flight and joy is here personified as something living like bird that has flown forever from his life fresh spring and summer so say spring and summer alliteration winter ice spring i so just uh, assonance Move my faint heart with grief but with delight. And see here, just a faint heart. Heart is not actually faint. Actually, the poet is faint. And that's why misapplication of adjectives. So, transferred epithet or hypology is used here. See repetition of with, with. So, again, repetition, no more. No more again repetition. So the poem ends with sad note and ends at the sad note. That's it in this video, my dear learners. But before I go, I would make a personal appeal to all of you. If you enjoy my explanation, please do like it, subscribe it, and share with your own friends and Hit the bell icon that you may never miss an update. That's it.